welcome back class 6 how are you all i hope you are doing great staying at home taking proper precautions and of course side by side you are also studying because your exams are just round the corner right okay so today uh, children we are back with um, a new chapter a fresh chapter from uh, history um, which deals with what books and burials tell us it's chapter 4 that we are going to uh, start now children tell me uh, with the heading of the book with the title of the chapter you must have understood that we are going to dig in the past we are going to dig in the past to uh, find answers of few questions and uh, of course um, uh, the books that we talk about of history are the manuscripts or are the precious written records which give us a lot of information about our past as well as the burials or if you go to uh, any you know graveyard sometimes uh, in calcutta you find a lot of um, you know graveyards and they are of the british era okay the britishers have um, ruled um, in and around kolkata so they have built a lot of graveyards so they are there from a very um you know from the british period and they if you go there if you visit you get to know from those you know those um, engraved um, rock structure that who was he or she uh, when he was born and a lot of other data so basically it tells uh, tells you or take you to the past so today also we will see how the books or and the burials they help us in excavating the uh, a lot about the past people and about their history about their living about their occupation and many more so when we talk about the hindu civilization when we talk about the hindus or uh, hinduism in larger context uh, the most uh, the oldest book that uh, we find is the rigveda or the vedas what are the vedas what 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 is veda veda is actually the religious text composed by the vedic people right if i ask you in short what is veda this should be your answer so the vedic people were actually a uh, very you know knowledgeable people a uh, very culturally rich people who actually have uh, have given a lot of information about how they used to live how they how, what were their civilization um, uh, you know what was were the, the special special um, features of their civilization and from them we have adopted a lot of thing in today's world okay so uh, so the trend has been followed from that era so i uh, i know most of you know about the vedas that the vedas are having uh, several uh, like subdivisions like four subdivisions we have the rig veda sama veda yajur veda and atharva veda amongst which the rig veda is the oldest one which was composed about 3500 years ago all right the rigveda includes more than a thousand hymns or the you know proverbs related to gods and goddesses all right they are called sukta or well said these hymns are in praise of various gods and goddesses three gods are specially important or mentioned there who are they agni the lord of uh, or the god of fire indra the warrior god and soma a plant from which a special drink was prepared these hymns were composed by the sages or the rishis or the rishi munis priest taught students to recite and memorize each syllable word and sentence bit by bit with great care most of the hymns were composed taught and learned by men a few were composed by women the rig veda in uh, is in the old or vedic uh, sanskrit which which is different from the sanskrit you learn in today's uh, day so children these hymns were actually performed or these hymns were actually taught by the gurus to whom to the to his or her children bit by bit and they used to read it out and the children used to listen okay many a times i remember when i was a 
child i used to tell my mother to read out something and i used to listen and i used to mug up in that way so it is a very previous notion it's a very previous concept a very backdated concept uh, which uh, has uh, still um, uh, which is still not there uh, in that book but which is a very effective way you know if you if you listen uh, i many a times i just switch on to uh, this radio and i i i, I love to hear the sunday suspense every sunday okay and later also if, if even if i miss any um any episode i just go back to youtube and search it and uh, listen to it now i have heard that whenever i used to hear something i used to remember it in a better way and uh, all the things used to get uh, fixed in the mind in a sequential manner so uh, that is why the other name of veda was shruti okay because you need to you needed to hear it uh, from your gurus and you had to recall it by listening so um, it was called so in the previous time so they were composed by the different um, rishis from time to time now the oldest books are written and printed uh, are you uh, are used are in, uh, written or printed the rigveda was direct was recited and heard rather than read okay so it was it used to be recited it was written down several centuries after it was first composed and printed less than 200 years ago so we will see now how the historians study the rigveda historians like the archaeologists find about the past but in addition to material uh, to material remains they uh, they examine written sources as well Some of the hymns in the Rig Veda are in the form of dialogue. This is part of one such hymn, a dialogue between a sage named Vishwamitra and the two rivers, Bias and Satlej. Both are the tributaries of Indus. You know that that were worshipped as goddesses. So Bias and Satlej both were uh, worshipped as gods and god uh, goddesses, and uh, we gen generally consider a river as a female entity. and uh, vishwamitra um, was a very famous sage of that time so the rigveda also narrates a conversation between vishwamitra and these two rivers so you can understand that uh, how veda has influenced our culture how it has a very pr uh, profound um, you know mark in our um, religion and culture so you will just go through this uh, for just your knowledge on page number 37 vishwamitra and the rivers okay now we are coming next to we will see that how um, how these prayers or uh, or um, the hymns composed by the different rishis they also talked about the different um, uh, entities in in the society okay Well, we will see that there are many pairs in the Rigveda for cattle, children, especially sons and horses. Horses were, um, you know, horses were also used in the battles, as we know, and uh, many domestic household used to have cattle. Some of the wealth that was obtained, um, and you know, many of the like battles were also fought for land. land was an important um, you know comp uh, important element at that point of time and uh, man many people used to um, when they used to win any battle um, some battles were fought for water and to capture people also But like up, apart from land uh, people used to go for warfare and they used to capture uh, water and people also the wealth that used to be um, like obtained uh, by the leaders some were given to the priest and the rest was distributed among the people some wealth was used for the performance of yagna and the sacrifices in which uh, in which offerings um, of offerings were made into fire so we call it you must have heard about the uh, daksha yagna or we used to call it uh, like दक्ष यज्ञ बेदे गाइक दैट सो दीज यज्ञ यूज टू बी परफॉर्मड इन दोज दोज पीरियड एंड इफ यू गो थ्रू ऑल द हिम्स यू विल अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट गिव्स यू एक्चुअली अबाउट एन इंट्रिकेट आइडिया अबाउट हाउ द पीपल यूज टू लिव हाउ द पीपल यूज टू परफॉर्म द सेवरल एक्टिविटीज एंड देयर एंड अबाउट देयर सराउंडिंग्स ऑफकोर्स 
okay now uh, we will also see that the men they have also mentioned about the different animals that were used to uh, that used to be there okay that used to be there uh, in that period either in the form of you know uh, household domestic cattle or um, or they can be acquired also most men took part in the war there was no regular army but there were assemblies where people met and discussed matters of war and peace they also chose leaders who were often brave and skillful warriors so the presence of warrior was important and a well mentioned uh, and uh, deserved a proper mention so there were warriors because they used to be there to protect their area to protect their land and also uh, to uh, to you know save their land from the enemies okay words to describe people there were uh, several words of describing people in terms of their uh, in ter terms of their work they do the language they speak and the place they belong to their family their communities and cultural practices okay so in this regard we will see that there were two groups who are described in in terms of their work the priests sometimes called the brahmins who performed various rituals and the rajas the rajas were not like the ones you will be learning about later they did not have capital cities palaces and army you know uh, a, a king having palaces army you know cavalry and all these things are a very updated notion a very modern notion we are talking about ancient history uh, where we will find that the in, in the vedic period people did not have much wealth okay so they even even the kings and the queens they were not that wealthy so uh, that is why the it has been mentioned that the king the notion of the kings were a little different than what we uh, see nowadays and there were uh, social classification social classification in the uh, in the in in societies so that also we will look uh, into in detail today i would stop here children for you to just go through till here properly and let me know if you have any problem so that we can uh, because i would like to give you some time for reading the book also so after reading uh, the chapter properly you will be able to understand uh, the concept nicely so if you have any problem till here please get back to me um and we will i'll get back to you next day with the rest of the portion till then take care bye bye